Today I want to talk to you about five habits that you can adopt right now to be a more successful programmer without even writing one line of code. If you're interested in programming, this channel might be for you. Please consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell. It's free. Small disclaimer, okay? I'm about to list five different habits here, which I think make a programmer successful. This doesn't mean that this list is in any way complete or ordered. On the contrary, if you know something that you might add to this list, please leave a comment below. And just because I'm telling this to the camera right now, I don't manage to incorporate these all into my own daily habits. But I try. And maybe so will you. So let's get on. Five habits that make you a better programmer without even writing one line of code. Habit number one, make a to-do list. Writing down what you want to accomplish in the day is a game changer. It sets you up for productivity and it helps you to filter the things that you want to focus on versus the things that you might do someday later. All right, I hear you. You're working on a big development team. You have all the scrum boards, you have the Kanban board, and you say, I don't need to write down what I have to do. I see it there on the board. But this is just in the perfect world, right? There's always this coworker that comes in or writes a short message and asks you for just this little favor. Where do you put it? I just write it on my to-do list. This way I'm not stressed to forget about it and I can go on with my current task. If you want to level up this habit, just do it the night before. Doing it the night before will prime your subconscious mind to tackle this task the next day. It will spike up your productivity even more. Just make it a part of your shutdown checklist. Which brings us to our next habit. Checklists. Pilots when they start the airplane. Doctors when they check for illnesses. Factory workers all over the world use checklists to improve the quality of work they deliver. And I saw really good programmers go through mental checklists when they write their code, when they review code of another person. Sure, these checklists are not specifically designed, but they just emerge from their experience? Okay, why not make it a conscious habit to create your own checklists? You could set yourself up with a routine when you start your day. For instance, you could check the current build processes, the unit tests, you can go to the server logs and check if everything is okay. You could go through the board and see what work is blocked, if there is code waiting for review and who of your teammates is working on what. Just write it down and have it on your desk and you are ready to go. By the way, creating your daily to-do list could be one of these checklist items. A lot of our behavior is driven by our subconscious minds, so making a conscious effort creating some daily routines for yourself will go a long way. And as a side effect, you will be way more prepared for your next daily stand-up meeting. So make it a habit to create different checklists for reoccurring tasks of your day. Reoccurring tasks. That brings us to our next habit. Habit number three. Successful programmers. Hit the like button and give this video some thumbs up for the YouTube algorithms. And they love to automate. The programmers I witnessed to be the heroes used automation to accelerate their output and the output of the whole team. They made it a habit to look for things in their own daily work to optimize by automation. Or they were the ones taking on the responsibility for the build servers, setting up a Jenkins, creating a multi-branch pipeline, making sure the unit tests are running and that new builds are getting distributed to testers. By the way, the checklists that you create are a great template for finding stuff to automate. By making it a habit to search for stuff that you do over and over again and automate it, you will increase the reliability of your own work and the speed of your whole team by removing human error. I, for instance, use Alfred. Alfred is a tool for Mac which helps me to open the tabs in my browser, to join video conference rooms and execute scripts. I wrote scripts for creating test documentation or creating bug tickets in Jira. Everything I need to do a lot and what I don't want to do, I automate. All right, habit number four. 
working with the Pomodoro technique. Pomodoro is the Italian word for tomato and this technique is named after a tomato looking kitchen timer and it basically works like this. I set a timer for 25 minutes. During this 25 minutes I do nothing else but to work. I won't check slack. I don't check emails. I don't look at my phone. I just work. Whenever something comes to my mind, catches my attention, I simply write it down. After that I have a five minute break and then another Pomodoro starts. After I did 25 minutes, five minute break, three times in a row, I do 25 minutes and then a long break, which is 15 minutes. So it goes 25, five minute break, 25, five minute break, 25, five minute break and 25, 15 minute break. This technique helps me to get deep work done. Deep work is a term I got from the book by Cal Newport. Other people might call this flow or tunnel. If you have never tried the Pomodoro technique before, this might sound really stressful for you. For me personally, it was more stressful to work without Pomodoros. Without it, I was really feeling anxious about incoming messages, ideas, emails, and all that stuff that pops into your head. And having a list of stuff I need to do afterwards, I'm actually more relaxed because I know I will get to the stuff I wrote down. And it's not getting forgotten anyway. I can reassess or address it after the 25 minutes and until then I do my deep work. All right, make it a habit to work with the Pomodoro technique. Talking about time brings us to habit number five. Make time for learning. In software development, there's always the next framework, the next development paradigm, the next software trend, VR, AI, blockchain. And actually it's hard to keep up and to filter through. Filtering through that may be a topic for another video though. But talking about habits. I think successful programmers make it a habit to learn things in general. Just time to follow your curiosity to go down this rabbit hole and explore new fields of knowledge. This will keep your senses sharp, your brain flexible. And in my opinion, this is what hopefully keeps us from being replaced by code generating AIs in the near future. Adapting to new problems fast and finding the right tools to tackle them, that's creative work and needs a quite flexible brain. By the way, congratulations, you're just making time for learning. At least I hope so. I hope that this video gave you some ideas and insights or at least reassured you that you're already doing what makes you a successful programmer. If so, please consider giving this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you like more thoughts on programming. And please let me know in the comment section below which of these five habits you're already practicing in your daily life. Until next time, see you later.